You're listening to the Living Inside Out podcast, and I'm your host, Talks Arutare. This is episode 46. Welcome to the Living Inside Out podcast, where we believe the unseen is superior to the seen. Episode 46 is Negotiations for Growth. How are you doing? What amazingness has been going on in your life? I hope you're enjoying the lazy, hazy days of summer or the cold, dark winter days or nights, depending on where you are. I have one single human friend in Australia, Ijoma. (laughs) And every time I'm about to assume all of the world share the same hemisphere, I think of her and I switch or I pivot. I, on the other hand, have been busy at work. I have been enjoying the summer. In London, it's been cold, rainy, then hot and sunny, and then cold and sunny. It's just been very typically British, the weather. And a lot of great stuff has been happening in the business lately. And I know why. (laughs) Well, at least I know why in part. In today's episode, I will explain it as metaphorically and hopefully as clearly as I can. And I do hope that my explanation will be a source of encouragement to you. Currently at the Baby Cut Shop, we are preparing for a series of events, one of which is this year's Chelsea in Bloom. So Chelsea in Bloom is an annual event that runs alongside the very famous Chelsea Flower Show. The businesses in the area decorate their shops with real flowers, which could be dry or fresh, but it must be real. And we decorate our shops or our businesses according to a theme that's set by the organisers. And so this year's theme is Around the World in 80 Days, um, Extraordinary Voyages. I was trying to remember the name. And there, there wasn't one that was held last year due to the pandemic and In the previous year, we won. We won bronze. Yay. (laughs) I attended the ceremony and everyone is awarded something. The majority of businesses receive an acknowledgement, a certificate that acknowledges their participation. So, of course, I thought that's what we got. And I didn't even bother opening the envelope. It was actually my assistant who a few days later called me and said, Tox, did you know that we won bronze? (laughs) I didn't know. So this year, we'll be pouring our heart and our soul and our mind and our creativity into this year's uh, Chelsea in Bloom. And we would love for you to visit us at 408 Kings Road from the 20th to the 25th of September. But I'd advise that you visit around, let's say, 20th to the 23rd, really, before the flowers begin to wilt and our amazing display starts to look a little bit tired. And also on the Tuesday, we've got something special going on in the shop, which you need to RSVP to. So keep an eye out on our Instagram stories if you don't get an invitation, but you'll find one in stories. On the home front, whew, I have one son leaving for university and this coupled with some leftover anxiety from our recent family challenge. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, go to the previous episode number 45 and I go into a little bit of detail of what we have uh, endured in the month of July. And so son going off to university, leftover anxiety had me feeling out of sorts again. I began to worry that this child needs to be physically present in my space. He's not ready to be on his own. What if he falls sick at night? What if he gets stranded when he goes out for whatever? I don't know. It's just been it's just been one of those mummy things. And I conveniently forgot that God is the one who watches over my children, not me, even though I wear the title proudly of mother. But that wasn't all. I also felt overwhelmed. Oh my goodness. I felt like I had fallen behind. Do you ever feel that way? I felt like I had left behind or I had left so many things undone 
that I'll never be able to catch up. And if I don't catch up, then everything will fall apart. And it just felt like this vicious cycle. Every time I tried to get myself together and plan to get these things that seemed to be lurking around the corner and over my head, hanging over my head, every time I got myself together to plan, I would feel overwhelmed that it's too much and I wouldn't be able to achieve it. And so I've been in that space and I finally took one day out last week to pour all my worries onto an A4 paper. And to my surprise, much of what I was concerned about had actually been done, but I didn't acknowledge it. <laughs> and that's why I recommend pen and paper always for sorting out the mind. So I'm in a much better place today. I'm a lot more upbeat. I'm much more on top of things and I'm excited about today's topic. Some years ago, I decided to believe that the reason I wasn't seeing the results I hoped for in my business was because I was growing my roots. Truthfully, I had no evidence of this happening, but I resolved to believe because it can be so disheartening when you pour in time and energy and sweat into a worthy project such as a business and you don't see any fruit. If you're going to make any sort of impact here on earth, if you're planning on fulfilling your purpose, if you are planning on being a success or completing the task that you know you were created to do, you are going to have to make some agreements. You're going to have to make decisions that will make sense to you alone. You've got to come away from living by your senses and start to live by the unseen. And by doing that, you will come up with your own concessions or agreements or reasons to keep growing and to keep going. You've got to negotiate with the illogical to make it make sense to you. That's really what I'm trying to say. When things don't make sense, you're going to have to figure out a way to make it make sense because when it does make sense, then you won't quit. So I'm going to share some of the illogical agreements that I made with myself, some negotiations I made to help me make sense of the lack of growth or should I say the lack of evidence of growth. Number one, believe your roots are growing. In the Royal Borough of Kensington and Chelsea, which is where my company is located, they've got very strict rules about what you can and cannot place on the curb in front of your establishment. So I was surprised to learn that I couldn't just populate the entire sidewalk with signs that said, come into the baby cut shop, the most beautiful baby furniture is sold here, uh, tea and coffee with your, with your purchase, <laughs> extra cream and sugar. Just kidding. I wasn't really going to do all of that, but I did plan on having some sort of tastefully designed signage that, that drew people to the shop. And so we've got to come up with, as businesses, creative ways to draw attention to us without looking like that's exactly what we're doing. And Kings Road, where we're located, is one of the country's most famous streets and used to be King Charles II's private road for him and his noble friends. And then in the swinging 60s, it was the shopping district for high fashion and all things mod. Think... Um, the Rolling Stones outfits were made there and, you know, the Beatles and everyone. And people would dress up just to go onto the King's Road. The ladies would dress up in their most fashionable outfits and the men would come with their uh, fine cars, all polished and looking nice. And I'm pretty sure that they'd be horrified to see me rolling up in my sawn off jeans <laughs> and my afro today. <laughs> so I invested in two large olive trees because I thought, okay, put plants out there, big ones, and people will see it from afar and it will draw attention. And I bought two sizable pots for the trees. I remember my assistant and I had to use about three or four bags of soil to fill up the space around and on top of the roots, the base of, the, of these trees, right? I think that was about 18 months ago, maybe even two years ago. But anyway, we decided last week to plant some colorful flowering plants on the surface 
that would cascade down the port and dress it up some more and add color rather than having one tall empty trunk we stuck in a gray bowl and then it carries on and becomes a ball of leaves. Imagine my surprise to find that there was hardly any space to add the new plants. The roots of the trees had grown to fill up the pots. Now, on the surface, there was no indication that this much growth was happening on the ground. Yes, the trees were healthy and they'd grown a little bit. They seemed a little bit taller, but that was all. The leaves had grown a little bit and it was initially a perfectly round ball, but with time we needed to trim it to keep it round. But I remained shocked at just how much root there now was. You may have heard about the Chinese bamboo tree. Like any other plant, it requires nurturing, sunlight, water, feeding, but it takes five years before it even sprouts from the ground. And I wonder how many farmers gave up on their Chinese bamboo trees in year two or maybe year three, or even in year four, just a couple of months before it was time for it to sprout. Think of the times that you have quit. Is it possible that you quit in year five, in the equivalent of year five of your growth? And so I had to make the decision that what was going on, where I couldn't see any fruit on the surface, there was barely anything happening to my tree. There was stuff going on that I couldn't see under the ground. I was growing roots. And so I encourage you today to choose to believe. Make an agreement with yourself that if you don't see any evidence of life, if you don't see any evidence of fruit or leaves or your trunk growing, make a decision, make an agreement today that you're simply growing roots. That's what's happening. And it's a decision you have to make. It's not a feeling that's going to come over you. I've talked about the Rockstar story and even run a couple of workshops on how to write yours. And by the way, the next workshop is on the 18th of September. One of the exercises that we undertake in the class is to write your future goal. Not an, I hope to one day do X, Y, Z, but rather it's an, I am working towards. And then you've got to commit to a daily activity, no matter how small in relation to the goal. The reason we do this is to move your mindset away from acknowledging only that which you can see to recognizing that the invisible is not only real, but is superior to what was or what is. Because many of us place so much more stock on that which is celebrated by others or recognized by the masses. When I wrote my rock star story, <laughs> I visualized much of what I am actually seeing today in my life. It was just a visualization. It was unseen, couldn't see it. No one could see it. There was no evidence that it existed. And today, the things that I imagined is actually what I am seeing now. I didn't know how it was going to come together. I had zero evidence that it was ever going to happen. But I had to decide in the midst of emptiness that I was actually growing underground. In the midst of fruitlessness, I was growing underground. And so coming to an agreement is essential, particularly between the place you first plant your, your seed and the point where the leaves start to finally break through or even the stem starts to come through the ground. And every tree, every plant has got its own flowering time, its own uh, season when it finally breaks through the soil. The second agreement I had to make is there are other currencies besides cash. Now, this one is for you if you believe your business or life growth has been hindered due to cash flow problems. Once you make an agreement with yourself that cash is not the only currency, you'll start to see abundance wherever you go. Trust me. My first experience with this truth occurred right after I lost everything and decided to start my business. I didn't even have a hundred pounds to put towards a website. My first alternate currency came in the form of my ability to learn. I convinced myself 
that I could learn how to build a website. In churches today, many pastors, particularly in the Pentecostal church, they use the phrase, sow a seed. (laughs) And by that, they mean put some cash in the collection box. But your idea is a seed. The idea that you had to even begin that particular business or start that career path or that ministry or organization, whatever it is, that is a seed in itself. And as you know, All that a seed needs is water and nurturing and light. Everything the orange tree requires to become a tree is packed inside a single seed because the seed is enough. In itself, it's enough. It means that your idea is also enough. It just needs nurturing. And nurturing requires resources, which often in our world, we equate resource to mean cash. Well, my nurturing came in the form of sweat, which is another type of currency. I told night after night with my newborn in my arm, building that website, sourcing products, establishing relationships with would-be suppliers and the likes. And also don't fall into the trap of feeling that you must know it all before you start. No one is keeping score. You can learn as you go along and learning means that you don't know it all. And that's okay. Yet another type of currency can be found in your unrelated gifts. Trade by batter. (laughs) Before there was any such thing as money, people traded their skills and produce. An orange farmer would give some of his oranges in exchange for tea. A rice farmer got meat in exchange for his rice from the butcher. And barbers and seamstresses would swap skills And that is why a mindset change and regular introspection is a necessity. Because if you lack confidence in the one area that you're focused on, you're not going to recognize that you actually have abilities in other areas. Are you good at organizing but need a website or branding done for your childcare business? Offer your skills. I'm pretty sure that there is an app for skill swapping. And if there isn't one, Hey, that's a great idea. (laughs) If you're looking for a business to start, build an app for skill swapping. The mistake many people make is assuming that being an expert is the same as knowing it all. And we live in a constantly changing world. There's always going to be something new to learn. No matter how good you are at what you do, it's it's evolving. You're always going to have to learn. So your skills and abilities are currencies that you can shop with. Prayer and meditation, that's a currency too. In fact, it is gold. It never runs out. I have shared with you the day I needed to send in my article to a media company I used to write for. I was in a state emotionally, (laughs) as broke as I could be, and just fed up at the state of my financial affairs. I cried out to God and his surprising response was, go and write your article. I was offended because I felt that that was just such a careless, nonchalant response to my very serious issue. But that's all I heard. And he repeated it once more, firmly, quietly, go and write your article. So I did. I was reluctant because I always have felt that I cannot function when stressed, especially when it comes to doing anything creatively. I can, of course, do mundane stuff, do the dishes, cook, tidy up and all of that. But when it comes to digging into my creativity, I just meet a blank when I'm stressed. So I sent off the article. It was published immediately. A couple of weeks later, I receive an email, a new business request from someone who had read the article based on the article. And up until that point, it was our biggest ever project, all because I took one seemingly insignificant step. And there's a scripture that says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. I want to add, don't despise small or irrelevant, seemingly irrelevant activities or abilities. And that, my friend, is why we leave from the inside out, because the outside appearance may be small, but it's inner power, (laughs) that would take you far. My third agreement, I think I should have called this podcast The Three Agreements. (laughs) There's a book called The Four Agreements. 
Believe that you are the best man for the job. Now, that's a nice catchy phrase when we apply for jobs or get invited to interviews. I believe I'm the best man for the job. That's why I want this job. But it's even truer when it comes to manifesting your own ideas. You see, I believe that our ideas come to us because it's a component of the purpose God created us for. Purpose is made up of ideas, ability, desire, longing, dreams, and more. Now, when all of these components converge, there's no stopping you. The trouble is when you take each one by itself and deal with it as a single entity, and you don't measure it against the backdrop of its bigger picture. I believe that ideas are seeds, like I said, and if it came to you, it's because you have everything in you to nurture it into the fullness of what it was supposed to be. You are the best man for the job. You have everything that seed needs. This is a truth you must believe because doubt lurks around every corner. How many times have you said, well, I guess I couldn't do it or, well, maybe it just wasn't for me or maybe I missed the moment Well, one of my prayers or affirmations or reminders, if you like, that I tell myself when I need that assurance is God does not gaslight us. I talk to God and I say, God, you don't gaslight your children. God will not place something nice just outside of our reach and act like he's given it to us only to pull it back again. If he called you into something, he's already equipped you for it. When I was purchasing the plants to add to our trees, to the bottom of the trees, I don't have a clue about plants. So I quickly did a search to find out what combination flowers could work with olive trees because I didn't want the tree killing the flowers or vice versa. And uh, eventually chose about three or four different types. But then I also had to pick the right soil for it because there were all kinds of instructions. Well, this works in an acidic soil and this one doesn't. Well, you are the best soil for that seed. I keep going on about seeds. Maybe we should have called this like something to do with trees or seeds. I don't know. Years ago, one of my most recited mantra became, I have everything I need to become all that God created me to be, period. Or as my African-American brothers and sisters would say, period, (laughs) with a T on the end. So if you can drag yourself to a place of believing that, This was given to you because you are the best person equipped for it. You are the best soil to nurture it. You'll be able to strut right past doubt. You will carry on when it makes sense to give up. You will learn. You will sweat. You will do anything. You'll be happy to be embarrassed just so you can manifest it in its physical form. So I hope that these three agreements and negotiations resonate with you and you will decide on one or all of them. I wouldn't give my time to record in this podcast if I didn't believe everything that I share with you. And my belief doesn't come from an external source. It isn't something I read in a book or I heard some guru say on a stage. This is my own experience, tried and tested multiple times and co-signed by the one who lives within me. I encourage you to keep a record of your experiences through journaling or even just sharing with people or you can even voice record. So you can also try and test these invisible and often illogical truths and see where it takes you. Living inside out means living by the inspiration and the leading and the guidance of that which is within you which is the Holy Spirit, which resides in your spirit, in the very core of who you are, as opposed to taking inspiration and instructions from everything else that's happening around you. I've often said that the outside is inferior to the inside or vice versa. The inside is superior to the outside. And that's what I mean when I say that, is that you take instructions from a realm that is yet to happen, the realm that causes everything you can see around you to exist. Announcement. The next Write Your Rockstar Story Workshop will be held online 
18th of September, head to my website, talksarotere.com for more details and click the link there. There's a link that says work with me and it has workshops there. You can also click the links in the show notes of this podcast. So scroll down wherever it is you're listening and you'll find a link to Eventbrite where you can book the workshop. Also, keep your eye out for my PR on a budget workshop, which will be coming soon. I aim to hold that by the end of this year because I get so many requests from small business owners on how to gain exposure through PR. If you live in the United Kingdom, you may have come across billboards with yours truly on it in a collaboration with Sage accounting software giant. I've left a link to the campaign in the show notes as well. And it's also on my website where you'll see pictures of me bossing it, quote unquote, in Chelsea. And this came about because I told my rock star story and also because I had to change my mindset with new agreements like the ones I've just shared. If you can come away from focusing on how you want to be perceived and instead choose to allow others to see your authentic self, I promise you innumerable doors will open for you. And so I recommend attending the Rockstar Story Workshop, which will form a solid foundation for building your authentic self or building your business. You are amazing for sticking with me and listening through all of 20 something minutes of me talking. If you have never listened to the Living Inside Our podcast before, and this is your first time, I do hope you were inspired and encouraged and you will come back. And I say a huge thank you for sticking with me, for coming, for listening. I'd love to know how you got to hear about this podcast or hear about me. And I certainly would love to connect with you on social media. My handle is at Talks Arotere, and there's a link to everything in the show notes or on my all on my website. Have an amazing week ahead. Let's continue to live from the inside out. Talk to you soon.